Paul Shiala's passion for altruistic capitalism and sustainability led him to found Delos and the International Well Building Institute, bringing together the world's largest asset class, real estate, with the world's fastest growing industry, wellness. He created the Well Building Standard, the first global rating system to focus exclusively on the ways buildings and everything in them can enhance our health and wellness. It's a system made all the more critical for a post-COVID world. I'm Akiko Fujita, and now we're joined by Paul Shala. Paul, great to have you on today. Welcome. Great to be with you. Let's get right into this momentum or movement that you have created through the Well Building Institute, because this is something you started eight years ago, pre-pandemic, pre all of this talk about ESG. What was the vision and how have you seen that evolve? Yeah, we've been merging the health sciences with the building sciences for, as you said, o- over eight years. Uh, we wanted to really understand the built environment, uh, our homes, offices, schools, hotels, uh, and its impact on the human condition, given we as people are spending over 90% of our lives indoors. So taking an evidence-based approach to quantify the connection between everything that surrounds us indoors, air quality, water quality, lighting, thermal, acoustics, biophilic elements, surface and cleaning protocols, and mapping those directly to our respiratory, cardiovascular, immune, cognitive, and sleep health outcomes. So walk me through what exactly it means to have a well building. This is an actual certification that businesses get or that buildings get. How do you measure that? Yeah, so our platform has two two uh, two components to it. On, on on one side, the International Well Building Institute is the uh, largest uh, certification body for healthy buildings uh, in the world now, with certifications in sixty three countries. Uh, this is a third party document review and performance verification of the health and wellness attributes of a building, uh, and now particularly with the Well Health Safety Rating. Uh, really covers the health and safety protocols of any organization, any building type, uh, what have you. I mean, there's no question you have seen huge momentum as a result of this pandemic. You already had a lot of growth going into this year. Um, Walk me through how the certification has evolved as a result of the pandemic and the new safety and health concerns that have popped up. So uh, launched uh, about five years ago, the Well Building Standard, uh, which covers the full gamut of all health and wellness categories uh, across thermal, acoustics, water, air, light, uh, what have you. Uh, Clearly, what happened earlier this year uh, was a need. Uh, Industry uh, came at us across sectors asking, can your International Well Building Institute, as the world's leading certification platform for healthy buildings, can you issue us some type of criteria and rating and a third party review of health and safety protocols. Uh, Clearly this pandemic has caused that need to arise with regards to looking at things like cleaning protocols and frequency therein, uh, emergency preparedness planning, uh, uh, stakeholder engagement, health services, uh, communication policies, what have you. So that was really uh, the the catalyst starting in February where our institute uh, went broad Uh, with over 500 virologists, behavioral scientists, building scientists, public health experts, uh, to pull the relevant features from the well building standard that have to do with health and safety protocols, and hence the launch of the uh, well health safety rating a couple months ago. So let's try to break off some of those elements there. Uh, There's a lot of viewers, I think, who are familiar with the air filters and the basic distancing that we've heard about with the temperature checks, all of that, that come with being able to operate in a building safely during a pandemic, but you've listed a number of other criteria there. Walk us through some of the specifics that are involved. So this is not meant to just be a reaction to COVID-19. In fact, most of these features already exist in the well building standard and have for years. Uh, Clearly you get into elements of uh, optimizing ventilation uh, to your point, Um, uh, but you know, emergency preparedness. Uh, This can cover and does cover not just COVID-19, as mentioned, but broader pathogen concerns, whether it's today or years in the future, uh, and other elements of health and safety. Uh, So these categories are meant to be rigorous uh, at the categorical level with regards to scientific uh, verification, but also flexible enough so organizations can meet uh, the flexible criteria in each category. 
And you've talked about working with government agencies. I imagine you've gotten a lot more buy-in as a result of what we've experienced over the last six or seven months or so. Can you talk about those conversations that's happening at the government level, not just here in the U.S., but internationally? Yeah, I mean, even here in the United States, first, uh, uh, 1,400 mayors uh, have signed off uh, on the well health safety rating uh, as a as a one of the responsible means and mechanisms to reopen buildings safely with regards to governing practice. But we've got conversations now with governments around the world, even looking at their own real estate portfolios, looking to put all their buildings that they occupy through the health safety rating as well. And so let's talk about who has actually uh, been adopted the criteria. A lot of familiar sites for those of our viewers. Uh, you're talking about Yankee Stadium, Royal Albert Hall over in the UK. Um, how have you had to adapt the criteria that you've set forward to some of these event sites? Well, good. I mean, this applies to any typology. Uh, you will see this seal, uh, the well health safety seal on the front of supermarkets, grocery stores, corporate headquarters, manufacturing facilities, stadiums, uh, offices, hotels, restaurants, basically if it's got a front door, it actually can be rated uh, for health and safety protocols. Uh, and uh, the system was built to be able to adapt across multiple locations and even in some cases thousands and thousands of locations as part of a uh, overall corporate portfolio. And what are what are viewers going to notice as a result of that? Well, the seal itself uh, is a is a symbol of confidence. Uh, you know, this process is putting science, structure, form, validity, and most importantly, third-party verification. Uh, so employees know that their company has done something, or guests or visitors or patrons or customers know that the building they're walking into has gone through a third-party verified process as it pertains to health and safety. Uh, the seal itself has a QRC on it, uh, an element of transparency. Uh, so walking into any door, whether you're walking into your office uh, or into a grocery store um, or into a hotel, for instance, that QRC will show and demonstrate the features of compliance for that particular facility. And so anybody who's visiting that building can actually look at that and see exactly uh, what specific standards were met as a result of the building. That is correct. That is correct. You've talked about this, this unique situation that you're in right now as a result of the pandemic. But to your point, this is something that is expected to go well beyond this moment in time. What is the case for a well building? Uh, you look at the wellness real estate principles, air, light, water, thermal, acoustics, biophilic elements. Uh, if one good can come out of all of this is a better awareness that our surroundings have a huge impact on our health outcomes. They have a huge impact on our productivity and obviously on our health and safety. And from a corporate standpoint, though, how, how do you measure that? When you're trying to sell the need for this standard and the seal, you've talked about productivity is one thing, but what does it mean from a profitability standpoint for companies and for that buy-in? Great. Uh, I'll compare this to the green building movement, okay? The efforts in green building to reduce energy costs. When you look at any building, about 2% of the ongoing cost of any building is its energy usage, waste, water, utilities, and that has spawned a $4 trillion industry called green building, trying to reduce that cost input. Now consider this, over 90% of the ongoing cost of any building are the people inside of it. Salaries, wages, benefits, uh, healthcare costs, productivity and output, attraction, retention. The well building movement promotes better outcomes for the 90% input of any building. And you consider the cost to achieve this fractions and fractions of 1% premium to normal construction or renovation, uh, or in some cases, even smaller than that, versus the gains in, uh, again, attraction, retention, productivity, reducing healthcare costs. All of these are very big quantifiable indicators that show that the well building movement uh, is an economic movement first that happens to have tremendous societal benefit using our real estate as a healthcare intervention tool to deliver preventative medical intentions to enhance all these outcomes. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a good blend of both a societal and an economic win. And Paul, this is something that you have been preaching for the last eight years, but it feels like 
at the corporate level, at the executive level, there has been a shift in the approach of the workplace as a result of what we've gone through with this pandemic. We've talked a lot about the work from home movement, companies being more in tune with the mental health of their employees and overall wellness. Can you speak to the conversation shift that you have seen over the course of this pandemic? Yeah, uh, big, big, big shift is uh, folks in leadership positions at companies want to really figure out how to appropriately communicate uh, to their employees uh, on health and safety protocols. Um, we've also seen a massive uh, recognition of this entire category in the ESG complex. Uh, you know, the the E in ESG has been largely defined as it become, comes to our buildings for years. The environmental uh, uh, elements to a, to, to a building. Uh, the S has been largely missing, that social component of how a real estate portfolio, uh, how an office, whether it's owned or leased, but how that real estate itself can contribute to societal benefit. So we've seen a massive jump in interest, not only on the investment side, but also the user side in using systems like the well health safety rating, the well building standard to uh, up their ESG scores uh, to demonstrate that they are making material changes that can be quantified. The argument, of course, was any kind of standard in building. Um, we've heard it with the green building that the cost is just too high. How do you make it economical for some of these uh, companies, some of these uh, developers who don't necessarily have to deal with sort of the, the high end? Sure. What does the cost structure look like? And in the broader picture, um, how much growth do you anticipate? Okay, so with the health, well health safety rating, um, this is a document review, okay, of protocol. Uh, you're dealing with a, a system that can be down to a couple hundred dollars per building with re regards to third party verification of those practices. So that is built to scale. Uh, we've seen tens of thousands of buildings, hundreds and hundreds of organizations already go through the system, whether it's some of the world's leading banks. Uh, JP Morgan will be putting the well health safety seal on all bank branches and global offices, stadiums like you've mentioned. Uh, but from a corporate standpoint, this is not an onerous cost. Uh, even the full well certification of a, of, a, of a development project, it's about one third of 1% premium to normal construction to build well certified platinum. Uh, this is, again, is not an onerous economic proposition. And we've seen clients come to us and say, uh, maybe two months, we broke even just in reduced absenteeism. Uh, and again, this is through the years, uh, not, not even relevant to the health safety uh, side of this, but very quick break evens. It's a very economic proposition, quite different candidly than the, the longer multi-year payback of green building. We're, of course, talking about buildings at a time when there are a lot of Americans, a lot of people around the world who are afraid to leave their homes yep. because of the concern around the infection. You've got a, a good front seat here to see how quickly things are going to start to reopen. Um, when do we when are you anticipating things return to normal and what does that normal look like yeah you know i think the pendulum swings uh in in the extremes you know when this first uh started there was a lot of talk well no one's ever going back to an office again and you're starting to see that start to shift as well and obviously we can't control the population statistics and and what the path may may be on on on, on any type of element here at a at a governing level level uh what we want to focus on here is again this is not just about today if one good can come out of this, it's a renewed or re-upped ante and focus on health and well-being and health safety in buildings. Uh, so what we're seeing here is a lot of folks, regardless of when are they may be fully returned or not, are going through the necessary motions to put this in place. And finally, that the fundamental shift here that we're talking about. Um, I realize this isn't just about the pandemic, but there's no question whenever we return to our offices and to these building spaces you're talking about, people are going to be thinking about that differently. What is that shift that you're expecting? Yeah, that's a, a great, great question. I would say, let's relate it to this. Um, you know, I would say maybe one out of 100 people uh, a year ago in the developed world probably had an opinion uh, or a concern or even a thought about something like indoor air quality. That number is 99 out of 100. Uh, that shift in mentality, that awareness, that learning curve, that change happened in less than a year. Uh, this pandemic will come and go. Future ones will come and go. Even look at the forest fires and the pollution issues, but the acute awareness now uh, has been elevated, which is a good thing. 
And if that's going to lead to more corrective action and better, healthier spaces in the long run, then that's a positive outcome. Paul Shala, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me.